This video is a follow up to Optics 1. If you haven't seen that video, you can find the link in the box below. That being said, hello everyone and welcome to the second video of this channel. A matter of physics. Today we are going to talk about lenses. Let's start with a short refresher. Refraction is when light traveling in straight lines passes from one medium into another, in which the speed of light is different. This happens due to the different optical densities. There are different types of lenses for different uses. A common use of one that you surely know is the magnifying glass. However, we'll present the two most important ones for your physics class, the concave and the convex lens. Let's take a look at the convex lens first. This lens is also called a converging lens. That is because of the way the parallel light rays get refracted through the lens. You can see that there is an interception point. This point is called F for focal point. You can find the focal point on both sides, as the light can shine through the lens from both sides also. The distance from the center of the lens to F is called focal length. We usually shorten it with a lowercase f. Another important point for the lens is M, the center of the lens. In order to construct an image produced by a convex lens, you need so-called ray diagrams. All you need to know are the three following construction rules. First, you need to set a point. We'll take the topmost point. The easiest step is to draw a line through M, the center of the lens. This line gets refracted in a straight line and continues that way. Step 2 is drawing a line starting from our chosen point that is parallel to the principal axis. After being refracted, this line passes through the focal point behind the lens. Step 3 is basically step 2 but reversed. You start off drawing the line through the outer focal point and continue with a line that's parallel to the principal axis once the ray gets refracted. Those three rays you've drawn should then meet in one point. This is where the constructed point of the image is at. Only two of those are really necessary. The third one is used to check whether or not the construction is correct. The picture can be upright, upside down, magnified or scaled down. If this is too much theory and confuses you, then just think about a magnifying glass. When you're holding it close to an object, it gets magnified. If you go further away, however, at some point the image even gets scaled down. If the object stands exactly on 2F, the image has the same exact size as the object. If the object is placed behind 2F, it gets scaled down. Placed between F and 2F, the object gets magnified. There are two special cases. When the object is placed on F, there is no image at all as there is no interception point. When the object is placed between F and the lens, that means that the image is behind the object. This is how magnifying glasses work. Let's move on to the concave lens. The ray diagrams of concave or diverging lenses are pretty similar to the ones of the convex lenses. Due to the diverging way of refraction, the light rays get refracted in the opposite way of the converging lens. So let's recall the three steps of ray diagrams. Step 1, drawing a line through the center of the lens. Step 2, drawing a parallel to the principal axis, which, after refraction, has to pass through a focal point. Step 3, drawing a line passing through the focal point, which will be refracted in a parallel line. The difference here is just which focal point we choose for step 3. It's the one in front of the lens, not the one behind, and so our image is also in front. The image is exactly where your refracted rays extension intersects with the line from step 1, the one through the center of the lens. Now if you are wondering how to find a focal point as there is no intersection point, then don't worry, it's very simple. All you have to do is to extend the refracted rays. The focal point is exactly where the extensions intersect. This of course you can do on both sides again. Let's now take a look at how to calculate the magnification of our object. The magnification m equals to our image's height h prime divided by our object's height h. As for the lens equation, we'll begin with the definition. Lowercase p is what stands for the distance from the center of the lens to the object. Lowercase q is what we call the distance between the image and the center of the lens. You already know the focal distance f. The equation itself is 1 over p plus 1 over q equals 1 over f. You have to pay attention to the signs though. Pause the video to then carefully study this table. Just by the symbol we can say a lot about the positioning of the image and the type of lens already. For example, if the image distance q is negative, this means that the image is in front of the lens, which means it's on the left side of the lens. This means that the image is virtual. To explain why this matters, let's take a look at a diverging lens. In the case of a convex lens, the object h would be on the left and the image h prime on the right. With a concave lens, however, the image h prime is on the left, in front of the lens. 
therefore, as you can see in the table, Q, the image distance, is negative. Last but not least, we'll roughly look at how a refracting telescope works. A refracting telescope needs two convex lenses, the objective and the secondary lens. The objective lens scales the image down. The secondary lens, also called eyepiece, magnifies this image so our eye can see it. Like this, light is bent in a way that makes you think that objects are closer to us than they actually are. Of course, this is very simplified. And that's it already for this video. If you have any questions, then don't feel shy to ask us in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like if you found this video helpful and check out our social media if you'd like. See you next time!